morning, good morning, and welcome back to the Now Morning Show. That's in my teach you, teach you children. And speaking of teaching the children, today we're going to hear from the Children's Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we're going to be discussing a number of issues affecting our children at this time. So joining us via Zoom this morning is Ms. Krista Ali, psychologist in the Child and Family Services Unit at the Children's Authority. It's a pleasure having you this morning. Good morning, Krista Ali. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. So first off, let's find out who is the Children's Authority and what do you guys, what do you guys deal with exactly? Okay, well, you know, the Children's Authority, our mandate is pretty wide. We are charged with the care and protection of all children in our nation. But um, so, so we're really looking at children who are at risk of abuse or who have experienced abuse and neglect. But, you know, we're also advocates of children's rights. And uh, we're just really here to ensure that children are enjoying this period called childhood. So that's why we're here this morning. We're talking about the SEA exam. And, um, you know, we're here to talk about some tips that parents can implement um, within these last three days before the actual exam. Well, then let's get into that one time. What are the tips that we can, we can look forward to or encourage children to, to partake in as they get closer to the exam Close. this week on Thursday? Right, so we just have about three more days until the actual exam. So definitely right now, we, we don't expect that children are going to be cramming. We don't want any cramming 24-7 right now. Um, if your child wants to do a little bit of work, like, you know, the, the test exams, some practice exams, the past papers, things like that, if they're having trouble with one particular thing, let's say in math, um, so like with fractions or something, yeah, they can do a little bit of work, but what we don't want right now is any last minute cramming. These last few days should be for them to prepare, just relax, um, and, um, mentally get prepared for the exam. Cause you know, we're, we're in a strange period right now yeah. with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so it's, it's really that parents should be encouraging children to relax, stay calm, do their best. And of course, what we need to be mindful of is looking out for stress in our children, symptoms of stress in our children. If you feel like they're more irritable than usual, if they might be lashing out a little bit, you find that they're not interested in things that they were interested in before. They, they, they're talking about the future and they seem a little bit hopeless. Um, you know, they might be blued it down. They, you are the experts on your child. And this is what I always say to parents. You are the expert on your child, so you will know when something is off, when something is different. Right. These are the things we need to be mindful of. And of course, when we're seeing this, what we need to do is talk to them. Right now, parents just need to be reassuring. We need to be supportive. Um, because, you know, what I found with, with adults as well, the, the parents of the children is that they can sometimes be quite stressed out because of the exam. And children mirror that. They, they notice that, that mommy and daddy are stressed out. They might notice the things that they are saying. So what we don't want is parents to be putting a lot of pressure on their child right now, talking about, you know, um, you need to pass for your first choice. It's super important to pass for your first choice. Because at the end of the day, that's honestly not the most important thing right now. I think right now, especially given the circumstances that we're in, it's just that the child does the exam and does it to the best of their ability, given all of the circumstances. Uh, Krista, can you tell me, in 2020 so far, I mean, like you said, we're in a pandemic and it's been a very interesting time, especially preparing for the exam. I would imagine the children have been, you know, up and down in terms of when it's going to be, when it may or may not be and all that stuff. Do you think that uh, this year in particular is an added stress on the children and how important is this exam really? Yeah, it's definitely an added stress, especially given the fact that school closed so abruptly. I feel like, you know, children were not properly prepared for that. The ones who were doing SE one minute, they, they prep in for SE and then it, school closed. And then um, we had, they probably had some online classes and then they were back in school feeling some sort of normalcy again. And then abruptly school closed again due to the, um, the spike in cases. Yeah. So, you know, it's definitely, and, and the thing is that as adults, we sometimes don't think about how much this stuff is going to affect our children. But the truth is that it does. And even if they don't fully quite understand what's happening, they hear what the adults are saying. They, they're seeing the stress in us. Yeah. And that puts some stress on them as well. So with regard to how important is this exam, to them, it's, it's, 
extremely important and you know to us too and it's really for us to be able to support them through this time let them know that even though this is a big exam it's not the end of the world if if they fail if they don't do as well as they thought they were going to because you know it's, it's really a strange time that we're going through yeah. right so we have to let them know that you know whatever the outcome is we're going to deal with it when that time reaches right now the only step that we need to cross the only hurdle that we have is actually getting them through this exam right and then here um COVID-19 has affected so many factors of life and it has impacted so many things um how has COVID-19 impacted the number of child abuse reports thus far right so um with regard to the lockdown that would have started a couple months ago and you know people being more at home and the the, uh, the, the stressfulness that has come with COVID-19 we at the authority sort of expected a spike in cases any number of reported cases thus far we have not noted any significant spike in the cases however what we are planning for and what we do sort of expect is that when schools does reopen we're going to get those reports coming in of things that were happening with the child at home or in the community um, during during this lockdown period, because you know they feel more comfortable usually disclosing to, to a teacher or somebody in their school. They might tell their peers, and then you know the peers go and then report to the to the teacher. So what we are projecting is that there might be an increase in reported cases when schools reopen. So presently, the Children's Authority is on is embarking on a new project where we conducting sensitizations with persons, the adults who are in schools who will be interacting with children. So teachers, principals, safety officers, guidance officers, to speak to them and sensitize them to the signs that they should be looking out for, and then what to do if a child actually does disclose abuse or neglect to them. What, what are the necessary steps to take from there? So what I'm taking from this is that during this period, the cases may be quite underreported so um, if I were to witness child abuse, so I had a suspicion of child abuse, how do persons report it to the authority? Yeah, so what we're, I mean, we're not inside everybody's homes to know what is happening, but the truth is that child abuse and neglect is pretty rampant in our country and in, in our nation. So what we're encouraging persons to do, if you suspect abuse or neglect, or if you are aware of cases of abuse and neglect, please report it to our toll-free hotline. So the Toronto Authority can be contacted 24-7 at 996 or 800-2014. That's 800-2014. Let me um, go a little bit extreme here. If you're in the, if you are a witness to child abuse happening at the moment um, yeah. and you were to intervene to protect that child, uh, would, from your knowledge, would there be any legal ramifications for such a person? Like, say, I was to intervene in someone, uh, um, you know, abusing a child, and I were to have to get physically engaged with that person. Do you know of any legal ramifications that could proceed from such a situation? Um, you know, we we don't we don't usually encourage persons to get involved in a situation like that. If something like, like that were to be witnessed, we do ask that you call the police as well as the Children's Authority hotline. In terms of legal ramifications coming out of that, I'm not quite sure because I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure of any instances where that has happened. But, um, you know, I'm going to hope that persons are, you know, thinking about their own safety as well as the safety of a child before getting involved in a matter like that. Please call the police as well as our hotline number. And before we go, what is the uh, Facebook handles and Instagram page uh, of the of the Children's Authority that we can follow? So the Children's Authority can, can be contacted in a lot of ways. We're, we're very active on social media as well. Um, our more information can be gathered from our um, our website at ttchildren.org. We have a lot of information on there, um, all about the authority, what we do, who we are, things like foster care, adoption as well. Um, we are we have an active Facebook page. We're active on Instagram, and that can be um, that can be found at um, Children's Authority. 
All right, so we well, with that, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning, Krista Ali, who is the psychologist at the Child and Family Services Unit at the Children's Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. So uh, that is how you get in touch with them, and that is how you can get more information as well as it pertains to this very, very serious topic of uh, children and, and child abuse and so forth. And I think it's very important that we remember those numbers in 996 as well as the 800-2014.